You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 11. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Well, good day, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, I am so glad you're here with Marcel and I today. Um, today, we wanted to talk about your weight loss journey and other people. Um, and this is something that comes up all the time, is how other people are going to react to what it is that you're doing. And lots of people are going to have opinions about what you're doing. And there are going to be times when they may present be presenting you with foods that you know aren't going to be uh, the best options for you. And there are going to be times when you decide not to eat something, but you might be afraid of what people are going to say about that. And so then the question becomes like, how are you going to handle all of this? Some people just avoid the situation altogether. And so, you know, like when they're in the process of trying to lose weight, they won't go to other people's homes. They won't go out to restaurants. They will just eat at home and avoid social situations. And they figure, well, you know, once I reach my weight loss goal, then I'll figure out what to do about food with other people. And I really want to let you know that can kind of lead to disaster later. Uh, You really want to learn how to manage this now. Okay. So, Marcel, you told the story of your sugar detox. Like, tell us a little bit about what that was like for you and how did you train other people around you? What did you say to them? So, so <laughs> this goes back a long way because one of the reasons why it took me so long to decide to do the sugar and flour detox is because my family, which would be my husband and my teenage son, they like to eat out a lot, like to eat fast food, uh, um, like desserts, yeah. w- which I like all of that too. But, you know, in my heart, I knew that I needed to change. The only problem was, is that I knew that it was going to be hard to get them to change. And I didn't feel like making three separate meals oh. so that everybody could have what they wanted. Amen to that. Yeah. yeah. So I um, came home. And I'd been, I'd been kind of bringing it up for a while and they were like, ah, ah. so then finally I just got serious one day and I, you know, I talked to the doctor about, um, you know, really wanting to, wanting to do this. And she agreed to come up to my house and help me clear out the cupboards because we had just gone grocery shopping and I knew that Rich was not going to want to throw things away. And I just wanted her to be there if you had, you know, if, if anybody had any questions, Rich or my son. But, um, but this, you know, just doing the sugar and flour detox and, you know, breaking that to my family, then when they got on board, like, you know, for the first couple of weeks, it was, we were videotaping it. So it was kind of exciting. And mm. I think it was easier for them to, um, be on board, you know, what, while the momentum was going on, mm. but this has been, you know, I've been doing this for now over a year. Yeah. It's been almost a year. Yeah. Isn't it? I know. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs and I've had a lot of slips, um, b- mostly because of stuff that's been in our refrigerator because they are not on board anymore. They're sort of gone back to, um, the way they used to eat. One reason for that is because we had a kitchen remodel done and in the last few months. And oh. so we didn't have a kitchen for a while. So we, so we had to eat. Yeah. Out. Okay. And so that sort of was the catalyst that brought us back to, you know, eating the fast foods or, you know, I wouldn't because I would eat a lot of salads. Um, you know, to be quite honest, I was skipping meals because when there wasn't any good options, I just, I didn't really know what to choose. It was a rough time for all of us. Yeah. And I think that um, it goes like far deeper than just, you know, the, the, the detox part of it when, you know, you get the momentum's high and you're excited about doing it. You know, when our new patients come in, you know, they're very motivated and very excited. But then I hear a lot of stories 
from people telling me, you know, so what do you do when your kids don't want to eat the same thing that you want to eat because they want the chicken nuggets and the fries yeah. and, you know, you want to please them. So then a lot of mothers end up making separate meals for themselves and for their family. And I know that it's a huge frustration. Yeah. And um, so I really can understand where people are coming from when they talk about you know, having to fight their family or fight their friends. Like, you know, friends like to go to Taco Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And if that was a tradition and then you can't go anymore because you're trying to eat better, then, you know, your friends are disappointed or they hassle you. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been, you know, as a matter of fact, I've been to, you know, events even with my family where we have barbecue and I will only eat a certain, you know, certain things and they'll harass me like, aren't you going to try some of that, you know, jello salad that I made or, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. So I can, I can relate to um, this topic very well. Yeah. And I think it's an important one for us to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I do. Um, I relate a lot. So I do want to talk about how how are we going to handle this? You know, like one of the first tips I have, I have for you is it has to do with boundaries. Your body is your body and other people's bodies are their bodies. And so you get to eat the foods that make your body feel good and they get to eat the foods that make their body feel good, whatever it is that they want. Assuming that they're adults that are 18 and over. Now, if you have some control over what your children eat, then you might want to consider teaching them the importance of good nutrition and what it means. And we can have another uh, podcast about children and children's food. I did. We did do a podcast on how we, the food industry hooks children early. Yeah, we did. We did. But yeah. still, I still hear it a lot. Yeah. That, like, what am I going you know, to feed are, my kids? Yeah. The kids mm-hmm. are wanting what they want, the macaroni and cheese and the yeah. spaghetti. And, yeah. and the parents are st- having a really hard time with um, changing their yeah. eating habits too, because mm-hmm. they don't, they're not conscious of what's going to happen to them in the future because they're young, they're yeah. invincible. All they want is something that's going to taste good to them yeah. and fill them up. Mm-hmm. And so, it's, yeah, it's always been a struggle in our house because our youngest son um, was a very, very picky eater, mostly just because he only wanted to eat fast food and carbs. Yeah. and I, I'm, <laughs> A lot of kids yeah, are like I don't, that. I don't know, <laughs> you know what happens in the brain with that, but um, it's always been a struggle in our house. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, when it comes to the adults in your family, they get to eat whatever it is that they want to eat. And and you can know a lot about what it means to nourish your body. But they are still adults and they get to eat what they want to eat. And the interesting thing is sometimes it's really, really tempting to just go up to and say, oh, you know what? You would do little, 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 like you would feel so much better if you do this, 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 and this, and this. And, and the interesting thing is that you have to understand is you can't answer a question that somebody's not asking. If they're not asking the question, what can I do to have a healthier body? What can I do to lose weight? Everything you say is going to fall on deaf ears. Yep. Well, so if they're not asking that question, you can't answer it for them. And I, so I do that to my husband all the time. Yeah. I'm always like giving him the lecture. But so now the boundary is if you want to eat something different than what I'm eating, you make it yourself. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you don't want to become other people's food police. You really don't. Um, and so there is another conundrum to think about, though. What if there are family members in your home? who are eating junk and bringing the tempting stuff into the house. That can be a real issue for a lot of our students and patients. Um, If family members are adults, remember they get to make their own decisions. But especially if you're feeling really, really vulnerable, it's important that these foods are not constantly in your sight. Okay, remember, every time your brain sees these foods, you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to indulge or not. Every single time your brain sees these foods, because that primitive caveman wants that food. And so after a while, if you have to make that decision over and over and over again, you just reach decision fatigue. That's what that's called, decision fatigue. Just can't make the decision anymore, and you just say, screw it, right? And sometimes we use other words. (laughs) That's happened to me quite a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So it might help to explain to family members 
that you're really trying to regain your health and you're wanting to lose weight and explain that weight loss means health, right? Now that you understand that obesity is a disease, weight loss means health and longevity. And you've discovered that there are certain foods that are real problem foods for you. And could they please be kept in a specific cupboard that you're not going to go into? Or, you know, for some people, uh, I even suggest that maybe they have their loved ones keep their foods out in the car, locked in the trunk, or just not bring it into the house. Um, You're not judging them for eating them. You're just saying, here's what works best for me. And here's what would help me in order to be healthier so that they don't feel judged by you. You have a right to ask for what you need in order to be healthy. And, you know, for, for those of you who actually would prefer to have the foods just not come into the house in the first place, that's a decision that you get to make based on your own brain sensitivity. I know that for me, if there's cookies sitting on the counter, I'm going to eat them. You know, I, I cannot constantly make decisions over and over again not to eat it. I will eventually cave. And so for me, it's just best not to have it around. Um, that reminds me of a story. So we had a patient that told me that there was like two bags of cookies that were way down in her basement, like in an old stove or something. The that microwave. Are, I think she kept yeah, them in the microwave. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she, I, she was doing so well. Yeah. And then this one time she came back and she told me that she had gone down there yeah. like in a moment of weakness uh-huh. and she ate the rest of the bags and they were stale even they were they yeah. weren't even new yeah and it's just because she knew that they were down there. i don't know why she her, might have been her husband who did it or something like that but she um she felt so bad because she she thought she could handle it mm-hmm. which is what happens to a lot of people yeah exactly but there are um and we teach this in the course that there are times when you know your um your brain is not uh, going to be as strong as ordinarily. There are times when you're in a moment of extreme fatigue or emotional upset or whatever, and you can expect to have the same kind of dedication and strength that you would ordinarily have. And so um, if you know that your brain is really sensitive to these foods, I would encourage you to make sure that they're not in the house. Yeah. So And that's real talk right there. Yeah, that is real talk. Like I said, the biggest challenge, though, is when you live with a family and they are not on board. Mm -hmm. And it is very, very hard to be separate Mm -hmm. from them, you know, because it separates you from them. Yeah. You know, a lot of ways. And plus, you know, I sit around and I watch what they're eating and I'm like, that's so disgusting, you know, and <laughs> that's, you're going to gain weight from that oh, or yeah. you're going to get diabetes. And that's what I'm thinking in my head is like, yeah. you need to, I'm just always thinking, you know, that they're eating badly and it bugs me Yeah, because yeah. I have to live with them. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel yourself sort of judging and criticizing yeah. them too. Yeah. I've had people tell me that sometimes other people will just leave food around and just say, use your willpower. Just oh use yeah, your willpower. Oh yeah, just don't eat it. You know, yeah. you're you're you know you're doing your diet thing. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to leave these cookies on the counter, and you just use your willpower. And um, this is where you know we really have to take a firm stand for our health because this is not a question of willpower. This is a question of brain sensitivity, and um, there are some people whose brains are just way more sensitive to these cues. So. Don't fall for that trap. I, I guess that's my my best advice. Don't ever think that this is a willpower issue because it is absolutely not a willpower issue. And you should not be expected to have stuff sitting around and just be expected to not eat it. It's just not possible, especially if your brain is really, really sensitive. So, you know, I have a hard enough time just walking into my bank. Back in the <laughs> back before COVID, my bank would have like cookies sitting out, you know, you'd walk into the entryway and there'd be like, there are these, just these icky old dry, gross yeah, the Hydrox or whatever they are. No, not <laughs> those. They were, they were just dry, icky chocolate chip cookies, but, oh. but it would be like, oh, I really would like one of those. And every time I walked past them, I had to remind myself, those are bad for me. Those are going to trigger cravings. I had to step in and make a decision every time I saw them. And so 
you know, just don't underestimate if you have a sensitive brain, what these foods do. Okay. Um, so take a stand for your health and have a conversation with the people that live with you. Okay. Another thing that I want to discuss is social events. Cause this can be really, really tricky for people. And, you know, more and more people are getting vaccinated these days. And so people are having more and more parties, more people. Um, I've just been involved in some social events where there are just more people around and more exposure to these types of foods. There's, there's, cultural traditions that we have. There's family traditions that we have. There's birthday traditions that we have. There's holiday meals, mm -hmm. whatever holiday, 4th of July barbecues are going to be coming up, but there's just lots of stuff going on. And sometimes we feel that if we bow out of these food traditions, then we're losing connection with our loved ones. Yeah. That's the way it feels. And that's a really, really common feeling. I mean, like, like if I'm at a birthday party, is the person that's having a birthday going to feel like I'm not celebrating them if I don't have a piece of their birthday cake, you know? And what if we're the only one that's not participating in the tradition? So you want to be, I just want to acknowledge this conundrum. I want to really presence it and acknowledge it because it isn't easy. It's hard. It's really hard. And you may decide to have just a few bites of the cake, but just know what you're doing. Okay. Just know if you've discovered that you're super sensitive to the drug like effects of sugar and flour products, treat the birthday cake the same way that an alcoholic would treat a champagne toast. You know, like you go to a wedding, they have a champagne toast. What is this alcoholic who's been sober for a long time? What do they do? They're not going to drink a glass of champagne. They're going to fill the champagne glass with sparkling water, and they're still going to engage in the toast, but they're not going to have the alcohol. And so in the same way, you can sing happy birthday and clap as the uh, candles are being blown out and do all of that without eating the cake and feeling deprived of the celebration. It is entirely possible, and I have done it. Yeah, and I don't want anyone to ever feel like if you do have a slip, um, because, you know, you're tired or you're, you know, you're at an event that, you know, you do have that piece of birthday cake. I don't ever want anyone to feel super bad or like they failed or they can't do this. Yeah. Because um, it's very, very normal, and uh -huh. you can just get – right back on track, but you have to talk to yourself very nicely about it <laughs> yes. and just forgive yourself and say, you know, I, tomorrow or the next meal is, you know, the next right meal. So, yeah, exactly. so don't beat yourself up about it. It's well, very normal. I've got a really, a kind of a funny story about this because I was just home in Kansas for my birthday. My, my mother and I share a birthday hey. and last year COVID had just hit and it was her 90th birthday and we couldn't have a birthday party for her. So when I went home to Kansas this time, she's vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. The facility that she lives in, she's in a memory care unit, was willing to let us take her to a restaurant because she's been vaccinated. Her very best friends were there as well. They'd been vaccinated. So we're all sitting around a table. And it's like, it's like we get to celebrate for the first time. And it was amazing. She blew out all her candles and I had a piece of birthday cake. I'm like, this is one of those times where I'm just going to I'm dealing with the cravings for a few days. Mm -hmm. I get it. I'll tolerate the cravings. I want to participate. I made that decision consciously. So I get home from the trip a few days later. My brain has been just craving sugar for a few days. I get home and I discover my daughter had had a party at my house and there was a big tub of chocolate chip cookie dough in the refrigerator. Had It had been unopened. They'd never mm -hmm. baked any cookies, but it was just sitting there. And that is my crack. Chocolate chip cookie dough is my crack. And I just looked at that and I'm like, this has to go. <laughs> this has to go. This cannot be here. Like right. my brain is way too sensitive right now. So I just had to really protect myself. And the people that were around me thought I was crazy. I didn't give a darn. Did you throw it away? Abs well, we put it out in my boyfriend's car where I couldn't see it and couldn't get to okay. it. Okay. And a few days later we found it. And by then, you know, my brain wasn't, my brain was off sugar and I was fine. But, okay. but, you know, when you know that you're in a sensitive situation, do what you have to do to protect yourself. And don't, don't be worried about what other people think. 
Just don't. I know. It reminds yeah. me of like this last, um, this last holiday, uh, I went over to my parents' house and, you know, they made ham and they made some vegetables, but my mom loves to make desserts. My sister made a dessert. Austin, my son even made a dessert. And so it seems like there's a lot more desserts going around than anything <laughs> else. And of course, everybody wants you to try their, you know, dessert. Their they special made. dessert. Well, I was so good. Like I just ate the, the protein and the vegetables and, you know, um, you know, some of the, the orders were vegetable tray, you know, and I ate some mm -hmm. of that. And then we leave, we go home. Well, my son, Austin had won, um, a, a dozen cookies yeah. from, from some kind of like egg race or something that we did. And I didn't think anything of it. So we bring them home and I have no idea why I did this. But the next morning I got up at like six o'clock in the morning and went down to the refrigerator or not the refrigerator, but they were on the, um, the countertop they were on the counter. and I, and I <gasps> opened them and I ate like the cookie monster. I didn't even know what, what kind they were mm -hmm. because I was eating them so fast yeah. and I, and they were big and I ate three of them without even thinking. Yeah. And then, you know, downed it with a glass of milk. And I could not figure out why I did that. I got really, really sick, though, too, by the way, like for a couple hours after that. But I couldn't figure out, like, why would I do that? You know, I've been doing so good. The one thing that I think is some, I'm not sure if anybody else relates to this, is I believe that maybe I felt like I had deprived myself, mm -hmm. you know, at the dinner. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, you know, I was just being very cautious, but I think I've just felt deprived mm -hmm. of what everyone else got to eat. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, my brain just took over mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to go have those cookies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was, and I, and I and felt they really there. bad for doing it, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I threw the rest of them away. Yeah. And that was that, you know, yeah. I'm still having um, sugar cravings, but I know that I'll get over that in, in a little yeah. while, but yeah. Yeah. But I just, that was, you know, that was a crazy moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it's normal. It's perfectly normal. That's yeah. the best part about this is that you didn't beat yourself up about it. Really proud of you for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes what I'll do is um, anytime I have a, a social event or a party at my house, I always have berries and cream. Because I love that and other people love that too. And if somebody brings dessert and they want to have dessert, that's fine. But I've always got the berries and cream option available. Even in restaurants, I've ordered it on cruise ships even. Like they they have berries and cream and it's really good. You know, that, that heavy cream that's whipped up, it's delicious. Yeah. And it's not going to jack your insulin levels up and it's not going to cause sugar cravings. And it's going to be very satisfying and a nice treat. So that's always an option. So the other thing that I want you to do, if you're not already doing it, is to join a community of people who understand this and really get it, okay? Um, I want you to know that we're born to be members of a tribe. That is how we evolved. That is how we survived. And so as little kids, we're watching our parents, we're watching the people in our community to find out exactly how to behave so that we can belong. Belongingness is a survival thing, okay? And so a lot of times these food traditions are associated with that feeling of belongingness, okay? And so that's why it might feel really hard to not partake of some of these food traditions because inside your brain feels like, and this is all unconscious, but your brain feels like you're um, leaving your tribe, you know, and that you're not going to survive. And so what we want to do is we want to have a community of people that we are associating with that really gets this. Trying to do this on your own is just nearly impossible. And so we have um, patients and clients like husband and wife teams that will mm -hmm. come in together. They always do better. We were just talking about this the other they day. Do, yes. How much better they do. Or we'll have like work groups. Oh my like, gosh. Yeah, like we if have there's lots an office, of work groups that are doing yeah. so well. They'll they'll do it all together. Yep. They'll support each other. Mm -hmm. um, Call each other out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, they'll support each other. Like if there's, a, if there's some sort of celebration that's going to happen, like right. – they're bringing healthy stuff to the celebration Definitely. instead of the crap, you know? So um, you can also join. Um, I have, I have two ways that you can join online to get the support that you need. Um, the first way is uh, 
a Facebook group called Sugar and Flower Buster Society. So you just go to Facebook, go to groups and search Sugar and Flower Buster Society. And you're more than welcome to join us there. We're all working really hard at helping each other stay on track and remember, you know, just exactly what these foods do to us. The other way is um, the Journey Beyond Weight Loss membership. Now that is a paid program. That is a course and membership where I teach you and I take a really, really deep dive into everything that you need to do to learn how to manage your thoughts, manage your emotions, how to really do all of this from a very, very deep level. And this is transformative. It really is. So I want you to consider that as well. And we're about to open up again. Uh, we Our next course kicks off on May 11th. So we'll be opening up registration the week before that. So keep your eyes open for the registration for Journey Beyond Weight Loss if you really want significant help. If you're just tired of the ups and down weight loss roller coaster ride and you want to really start doing some of the deeper work that's required, that's what this course is for. And there really is nothing else quite like it out there. So yeah, and another great thing about it is it has, as we do, um, support calls mm-hmm. by Zoom mm-hmm. every Tuesday. So you really get like that interpersonal communication with other people that are mm-hmm. going through um, the same journey that you're you're on yeah. and it, it gets it gets pretty deep. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it changes you from the inside out. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, so um, so I just wanted to make sure that that you guys all understand just how important food traditions are. And how you can manage all of this while still partaking, not necessarily in the food traditions, but in the community and interpersonal traditions that you're used to. And how it's entirely possible to live a really, really healthy life and yet still take very, very good care of your body. I've been doing it for years now. And like I said, once in a while, I will choose to do a splurge, but I know what the consequences are going to be and I make the choice deliberately. And that's what I want for you. I want you to feel peace around these traditions. I want you to feel peace around food. I want you to make decisions knowing what you're doing. And if you slip up, I don't want you to feel badly about it. I don't want you to feel badly about any of it. It is difficult. There's no question. Um, I think we're good for, did you have any other last minute thoughts, Marshall? Um, no, I just think this was a great topic. Um, yeah. I'm sure that we could have gone off in a lot of different directions because yeah. there's so much more to it. There is. Um, and sometime we'll probably talk about some of those other topics. But yeah. I think that um, we covered a lot of what people are struggling with when it yeah. comes to um, wanting to be healthy for themselves and mm-hmm. just the, their, the people around them. Mm-hmm. Let us know. Um, go to journeybeyondweightloss.com blog podcast. And if you have any questions, any specific questions, you can put comments in um, where we post the blog. So let us know if you have any questions or comments. We also post these on YouTube, uh, the Dr. Angela Zekman YouTube page. Oh. And you can you can ask questions there as well and make comments. We'd love to hear what you think about all of this and what your biggest struggles have been when it comes to other people in your weight loss journey. And if you have ideas for future podcast episodes, Make sure to let us know that too. Yeah, you can also yeah. go on to the um, Sugar and Flower Buster Society. It is a great Facebook group. Yeah. And super encouraging and very real. Yes. And um, I would encourage anybody that wants to be a part of this, this community would get on there. Yeah. Awesome. Join. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's all for this week. We will see you all next week. Everybody take care and have a great week. Bye-bye. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.